Back when I was getting my PhD. Back when I. Back when I was getting my PhD, I needed a contact mic for my djembe robot. And at that time, I found this famous blog post by Zach Poff in which he describes how to build this contact mic preamp designed by Alex Rice. And henceforth, I might refer to this as the blog preamp. And so I built this. And at the time, I didn't really have a good way of measuring it, but it wasn't really doing what I needed it to do. And that's part of what set me on the path of eventually developing my own contact mic preamp and developing the tools that can be used to measure these things. And so today I want to measure both this blog preamp and my new Marshmallow DIY Phantom preamp, which I described extensively in my last video, and I'm going to compare these. And so just to start with a few kind of obvious points of comparison, these are both piezo disc preamplifiers, so they have the same basic purpose. They're both Phantom powered, and these are both DIY projects, although I will say that the Metal Marshmallow preamp comes with this circuit board already fully assembled, so maybe it's a little bit less of a DIY project than the blog preamp, which requires you to assemble the circuit board yourself. And before I make any measurements, I want to try to convince you that I really did build exactly the circuit that is described on the blog. The one small exception is that the recommended transistors are no longer manufactured so I use the superseding part, which I believe to be either identical or superior in all of its characteristics. And that brings up another point of comparison, which is that the blog preamp is using a couple of transistors in a kind of rudimentary class A amplifier configuration, whereas the Metal Marshmallow preamp uses a modern class AB audio op amp. So my experimental setup consists, first of all, of this little piezo disc, which I'm actually going to use as a speaker, not a microphone. And so this is getting plugged into the output of my audio interface so I can play sounds out of this speaker. And then I have this second piezo disc, which I am using as a microphone, and I'm sticking that directly to the speaker. And then I've got the metal marshmallow preamp, which is going down in there. This whole thing is taking place in this box, and I'm grounding the metal box. Ultimately, this is going to be connected to the ground of the battery in my laptop, and that should keep out unwanted electromagnetic radiation. And then here's the blog preamp, and I'm plugging that into the mic input of my audio interface, and that goes down into the box, and then I'm plugging this microphone piezo disc into the input of the blog preamplifier. And then, of course, I plug my audio interface into my laptop, and I turn phantom power on. And just to be clear, this is the setup that I have now. So I'm going to use my software to play white noise out of the speaker, and that's going to get picked up by the microphone and go through the preamp, and then I'm going to plot the spectrum of the sound that comes back. And for now, the Metal Marshmallow preamp is off to the side and it's not connected to anything. And as soon as I press the button in my software, it's going to play white noise and record it for about 40 seconds, but I've trimmed that down to just a few seconds in the video so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. Yeah, so there you go. This is the result. This is frequency on the x-axis plotted as a function of amplitude on the y-axis, and there's not much that can be said about this just by itself, although I will say that the most salient feature here is this big peak right around 7 kilohertz, and that actually has to do with the way the two piezo disks interact with one another, and that's not really related to the preamp as such, and so I'm just going to ignore it. And maybe the other thing I'll point out is that this graph is kind of U-shaped below about 1 kilohertz. It kind of goes down and then back up again. And in my experience, that strikes me as being a little bit unusual. But anyway, let's keep going and see what we can find out, because the other thing I want to do is measure the noise floor of this preamp. And so I'm going to put my software into silence mode. And so now, rather than playing white noise out of this speaker, I'm just going to play nothing out of this speaker. And so I'm basically just measuring whatever noise is generated internally by this preamp. So here we go. 
Yeah, so that's the new plot, and there it is together with the previous plot, and holy crap, that is a lot of noise. Look at this, below 100 hertz or so, there is more noise than there is signal. The signal to noise ratio here is approximately zero. This preamp is generating so much noise in this region that it just can't hear anything else. And 100 hertz actually isn't that low. And so what seems to be happening here is that what the preamp actually hears looks something like this, where it just doesn't hear low frequency sounds very well, but at the same time it is generating a huge amount of low frequency noise. So this U-shape is kind of the intersection between the sound that the microphone hears and the sound that it emits. Okay, so now I'm going to switch preamps, and what I'm going to do is very carefully remove this piezo disc from the blog preamp and plug it into the metal marshmallow preamp, and I'm going to be very careful not to move or disturb the piezo discs at all as I do this. And I'm also going to switch the audio cable over from the blog preamp to the metal marshmallow preamp. And so just to be clear, what I've done is just swap the two preamps around. And I have not changed anything else. I'm still going into the same input on my audio interface. I haven't touched any of the knobs or buttons. I haven't disturbed the piezo discs. Everything here is exactly the same. And for this to be a fair comparison, I also need the gain of the two preamps to be the same. And I guess that brings me to my next point of comparison, which is that the Metal Marshmallow preamp has adjustable gain and the Blog preamp has fixed gain, but I don't know how much gain it has. But I can figure that out. So I'm going to set the Metal Marshmallow preamp to unity gain so that the voltage going into it is exactly the same as the voltage coming out of it. And I'm going to put my software back in white noise mode and I'll run my experiment. So this is the new plot, and there it is together with the original white noise plot from the blog preamp. And right now I'm just looking in this range between 1 and 10 kilohertz, and you can see these plots have almost exactly the same shape, just the new plot is a bit lower. And if I scroll down, my software is telling me that this new plot is in fact about 12 decibels lower. So that answers that question. This blog preamp has a fixed gain of 12 decibels. So now now I need to turn the gain on the Metal Marshmallow preamp up to 12 decibels, and I just did that by trial and error, and I eventually got it right to where it needs to be. So now I'm going to run my experiment with white noise again. And so this is the new plot. And there it is together with the corresponding plot from the blog preamp. And you can see that up here, these plots are identical. And if I scroll down again, I can see that now they have exactly the same gain as one another. So this should be a perfectly fair comparison. And again, aside from that, there's not a lot that I can say about this plot just by itself. So I'll put my software back in silence mode so that I can measure the noise floor of this preamp. Okay, so that is what that plot looks like, and there it is together with the previous measurement, which is the white noise measurement from this preamp. And the first observation is that there's actually really good separation between the signal and the noise down here in the low frequencies. Even here at 60 hertz, there's 40 decibels of separation, which means that what the microphone heard has an amplitude that is a hundred times greater than the noise that this preamp is generating. And just to be clear, you shouldn't take that as the signal to noise ratio of this microphone, because I could have gotten more separation just by turning up the speaker. I'm just showing you this to demonstrate that there's no real intrinsic reason why the signal and the noise should intersect in the way that they did in the other preamp. The other thing that we can say about the Metal Marshmallow preamp is that its frequency response in the low frequency range is pretty flat, at least down to 20 or 30 hertz or so where it does start to roll off a little bit. But note that this graph goes all the way down to 10 hertz, which is subsonic, and most microphone manufacturers wouldn't even bother to show you that part of the graph. 
And then the elephant in the room here is this. What the heck is this spike doing here? And it turns out that that's my neighbor's air conditioning unit and I have one just like it. So I measured it using the same technique. And this is what that looks like. And you can see that the main peak is just a hair below 100 hertz here. And then there's kind of a secondary peak just a little bit to the right of that. And those are exactly the locations of these two peaks in the noise floor of my mic. So that explains that. Unfortunately, I don't have an anechoic chamber to do these experiments in, so I do get some ambient noise. And I suspect that even some of this might be the result of ambient noise, but I'm not really sure. And the reason this peak didn't show up in the blog preamp is again just because its noise floor is so high that it just completely drowns out sounds that are this quiet. And then there's one more measurement that I want to make just to put a baseline on this whole thing. I'm just going to connect nothing to the input of my audio interface. And I'm just going to measure the noise floor of the audio interface itself. And so that is what that looks like. And there it is together with the noise floor of the two preamps. And I want you to be able to hear what these sound like. So in post, I added an extra 45 decibels of gain to each of these noise floor recordings, and I'm going to play them in succession for you now. So the blog preamp has a noise floor that is on average 15 decibels higher than the metal marshmallow preamp, and in places it's even 30 decibels higher. And in turn, the Metal Marshmallow preamp's noise floor is only 3 decibels above the audio interface's noise floor. And this actually highlights why you need a preamp with adjustable gain. Because remember, I turned the gain up by 12 decibels, but I only ended up with 3 extra decibels of noise. Whereas if I had left my preamp at unity gain and instead turned my audio interface up by 12 decibels, then everything, including the noise, would have come up by 12 decibels. So the signal to noise ratio actually improved when I turned the gain up on the preamp. And so I guess that leads me to my final point of comparison, which is that the Metal Marshmallow preamp actually has really great noise performance, whereas the Blog preamp is actually quite noisy. Moreover, the Metal Marshmallow preamp has a really fantastic bass response, whereas the Blog preamp apparently has a really poor bass response, but again, it's not even possible to measure because the internal noise is so high. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure that this blog preamp even offers any advantage over just connecting a piezo disc directly to your audio interface with no intervening preamp. And I've measured that several times in the past, and of course the reason you shouldn't do that is because you get such poor bass response. But at least you don't get any extra noise when you do that. Whereas this blog preamp not only gives you the same poor bass response, well it does give you 12 decibels of extra gain, but it gives you way more than 12 decibels of extra noise. So I'm not really convinced that there's any advantage to using this blog preamp as opposed to just using nothing at all. The other question you might have is, well, what if I don't want a DIY project? What if I just want to buy a finished microphone? Can you do this type of comparison for finished products? And the answer is that at least to a certain degree, I don't need to because these two preamps that I compared today are actually in complete products. For example, the Marshmallow DIY Phantom preamp is exactly the same as the preamp that is in the Metal Marshmallow Pro contact mic. And additionally, this blog preamp is in a number of different complete contact mics that you can buy, and many of them are listed here on Zach Poff's website. And it looks like maybe some of these have been modified to a certain extent to address some of the exact problems that I've pointed out today. But as far as I can tell, most of these appear to be exactly the same preamp that I've tested today, including this one called Cortado, which people have asked me about in the past. So anything that I've said about these preamps today also applies to the complete products that contain them. The other thing I wanted to talk about is research ethics. Because, of course, I'm trying to sell microphones, so maybe you shouldn't entirely trust me. But on the other hand, 
The reason that I'm doing this research is because I genuinely want to design better products, especially in this area that's been stagnant for so long. And in fact, I set out years ago to beat existing products. So it shouldn't be that surprising or that controversial that I eventually succeeded in doing so. But ultimately, this is why I'm doing this research as openly and transparently as I possibly can. I'm showing you exactly what I'm doing. I've put my code up on my website. It's open source and freely available to anybody. And I've done that specifically so anyone who's skeptical about what I'm doing can try to replicate my results. And if anybody can demonstrate that I'm wrong, I would welcome that because I would use that information to go and build better products. But anyway, I guess that's all I've got to say about that for now. So as usual, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and, you know, maybe buy some microphones from me. That would be helpful. But anyway, I guess I'll see you next time. Bye!